Today I'm joined by Florian Nweck, who will do a machine demonstration later, and James McKenzie, who will support in answering questions. We want to introduce you today to a new machine generation. But before we do that, we want to show you the history and the roots behind this machine. For hardware, the transition from analog to digital is not only a technological story, but also a generational. After the first Harper printers in the 50s, um, the Harper Matic, for example, um, Harper moved into flexographic print for inline blister. Uh, here um, at 231, and first printers of Harper. After a while, uh, Harper introduced in the 2000s uh, the second generation, um, which was all about the optimization of printing technology. First, a further optimization for the, from the flexographic print unit occurred, from transitioning from a table to cylinder print to a cylinder to cylinder print. Um, and secondly, with the introduction of a digital print unit. You can see here in the background a hybrid system which uses both the flexographic print unit and the digital print unit. The third generation that we want to present to you today was all about digitalization. It was used um, to improve the connectivity of the machine, to increase the level of automation, and to make it easier for the workflow generation at all. Florian will now demonstrate this new machine generation. Thank you, Felix. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the latest evolution step of our proven Hopper web printer series, which you may currently know under the designation Hopper 230, the Gematic Web Chat or Hybrid. Its working title is G3, indicating that this is the third generation in this line of products. This design iteration incorporates a state of the art PLC architecture and a new uh, user interface, as well as several improvements to usability and maintainability. While keeping the core principles of how we apply the ink to the substrate during process. The machine you see here is a hybrid offline or roll to roll configuration, combining the, the respective advantages of the flexographic and the digital printing technologies. But as with the current generation, it is also available for inline applications to be mounted on top of blister lines or behind them, uh, as well as purely flexographic or digital only. The key differences between this machine generation and its predecessors are as follows. First of all, a number of features resulting from the new PLC and IPC architecture, namely a new user-friendly PDF-based workflow for digital data, combined variables, uh, batch variables, serialized data with a fixed artwork. Then several uh, new integration possibilities via OPC UA, and a number of standard features like batch record and audit trail creation and export. Then in the area of maintenance, elements have been redesigned with keeping uh, in mind to, to minimize downtime for maintenance and cleaning act activities. One particular example of this is the new curing unit, which is fully pluggable, just like the UV lamp that is within it. Then, in the field of performance, the, the drives and dimensions of buffers has, have been optimized to allow for up to 35 meters per minute of output, irrespective of whether we have a pure flexo, a DOD, or a hybrid system. Then we have a range of new optional features, uh, like one of the most prominent ones that is installed in this machine here, which is a, a fully integrated vision inspection system capable of inspecting the full artwork and checking it against an electronic reference or input. Now let's take a look at the machine in action. Uh, the machine is now searching in zero position. But we will have uh, in this configuration web being fed from the online module via the in-feed advance, via the flexo unit, 
a new T model, then it passes the vision inspection. And MyOS flies table, allowing you to uh, address any results of the inspection before being rewound onto the, the, the rewinder. Okay, if you have any questions, please don't uh, hesitate to ask them now. Thank you for your time. So well, thank you very much for your presentation, Florian. Um, since there are no questions in the chat yet, maybe I can ask a, a couple of questions. Um, talk to us a little bit about how the machine could handle a big batch versus a small batch, and um, what's the process for adding variable data to, to an artwork? You can see this uh, machine configuration is equipped with one flexographic printing unit uh, and a digital one. The flexographic most suited for uh, elements of the, the artwork that remain uh, the same for, for large batches. So you, uh, whenever you, you change the, the print artwork, you, you change the, the print mat. And the, the digital module suitable for um, quick changeovers for smaller batches. You, you change the, the variable data by sending a new electronic artwork. Uh, the same goes for a serialized data stream. The, some of you may know the current uh, PlaySeed software used to prepare the, the print data. This is now changed, also in line with our uh, Web 4.0 uh, printers, that you basically use a, a PDF with placeholders for the, the variable data fields, uh, which are interpreted by our um, HMI software and replaced with the variable input that could come from either the HMI or also an external source. Thank you, Florian. Perhaps another question for me then. Um, in terms of the things that you're most proud about for this developer, because obviously you were very deeply involved in it together with Felix, um, what are the three things in the machine that, 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 that stand out as the, let's say, the things which for you really differentiated from the previous generation machine? Uh, yes, I, I would say um, I'm, I'm proud of that we achieved to, um, to keep the... Uh, the to keep the core principles of how we apply the ink to the substrate. Um, we did not want to, to risk anything there. We, we, we took no risks, but on the other hand, we took full advantage of the, the new features that the new PLC architecture and the IPC brought. Um, so we are at the state-of-the-art level with this, with this printer. That's great. Thank you, Florian. Maybe a question for Felix now then. Felix, if, if I wanted to print everything digitally, yeah. Um, could I do it on this machine? And how long would it take me to do a, a changeover from one artwork with variable data to another artwork with variable data if I did everything digitally? Um, this um, is a quite simple question because the answer is it would be very um, quick. Uh, a changeover um, would take only a couple of minutes. Um, it, um, Depends obviously um, on um, how your workflow is set up, um, how the back end system, the SCADA system uh, is connected. Um, but uh, on the machine itself, the changeover would be uh, between minutes. Minutes. Thanks you for the answer. Uh, again, I'm still waiting for any questions to come in. So if you're still online with us, please feel free to add a question. I'll just keep going because I know all the standard questions that customers ask. So this machine is in a roll-to-roll -roll configuration. Strictly speaking, how many lines could uh, such a machine uh, support? If you had um, a machine like this offline, how many blister packaging lines could a machine like this support? 
Um, in, in principle, it would be a calculation of you know how much out do you get out of this roll-to-roll um, -roll configuration. The maximum is 35 meters per minute. It depends, uh, of course, of the utilization of the maximum uh, index length on the, the flex. So because there it's given by how many um, blisters you get onto one print mat. But uh, there, it's just a calculation of you know how how much output do you get and what is your the, the performance of, of the lines you want to supply with. I mean, I think typically, if I maybe just elaborate, typically a machine like this can keep up with about four blister packaging lines. Of course, it does depend on the utilization of the lines, so we'd have to look at that. But generally speaking, a machine like this, if you have four blister lines, one offline machine will support them. So we have a few minutes left. Um, maybe another question then. Um, if I have a HAPA 230 and I want to use the print maps from that HAPA 230 in this machine, uh, because we know that this has a bigger print cylinder, can I use the print maps from a 230 on this machine, Florian? Uh, yes, we have foreseen that, um, that use case and there is a configuration of the machine where you where we install a specific print mat cylinder that um, can hold the, the 230, the smaller uh, print mats. But uh, then, of course, you have to keep in mind that the performance will drop um, quite significantly if you don't utilize the, the, the maximum index length that, that this machine provides. Perfect. Um, OK, uh, in terms of the, the digital printing system, then, Florian, um, Let's just imagine the machine is running. The operator gets a, a message that says, ink level low, you need to refill. Do I need to stop the machine in order to refill the ink, or can I just carry on? On the, the, the digital module, module, you can fill it in during operation. Um, it's a separate cabinet that um, you know, does, uh, it prevents you from reaching any, any dangerous areas in the machine. That's possible for the flexographic unit, because the ink is in, in the, the inking device, uh, there you have to stop the machine, take it out, refill it, and insert it, just like with the, the machine generation. Uh, another question then, um, in terms of maintenance, um, what, are the, what are the key maintenance points on this machine? Uh, yeah, the, the one that I touched on briefly um, is the, the UV curing unit uh, that's now fully plottable, so all the, the signals, all the utilities, um, they're just connected via plug. And the same goes for the UV lamp within it. You just plug it in, take it out, so uh, you minimize the time you need to change a lamp or to any maintenance activities on the, the curing unit. And then, in principle, we've always um, kept the principle that you can uh, remove the elements um, uh, isolated, so you don't have to take apart the uh, half of the machine. If you, for example, want to to access the, um, or take away the, the, the print mat cylinder for cleaning, it's um, it's cut here, so you can just remove that um, isolated. And also, um, it's it's easier to remove components from the, the front of the machine to the front without having to to go to the back or basically needing four hands to do something like that. We have a good question that's just come in from a, a, one of our clients in Spain. We have to handle it quickly. Um, the camera. If we have detect a fault, and the unlikely of detecting a print fault, if it's inline or roll to roll, what is the action that needs to be taken? How is that handled? For the downstream machine, which would handle the, the recheck. Uh, in this offline configuration, we stop in a precise location. Uh, on this price table, and then we have we have two options of addressing it. You can either mark it, or you can uh, splice it out. You, you cut it, you, you pull the web, um, and in this mode, the, the printer will resume operation until you have reached the point where you want to splice it. Perfect, Florian. Well.